Hi everyone, it's Michael. Uh, so I have another fantastic problem for you guys today. Um, this one is from the IMO shortlist in 2012. Uh, so it was the fourth geometry problem on the shortlist. Um, so uh, I hope you all enjoy it. It's a, it's a neat little problem that doesn't have too many initial lines. And if you want to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm going to go over the solution. Uh, so we have a triangle ABC uh, with AB not equal to AC and circumcenter O. Uh, the bisector of angle BAC intersects BC at point D. E is the reflection of D with respect to the midpoint of BC. So I let M be the midpoint of BC and E is the reflection. And the lines through D and E perpendicular to BC intersect AO and AD at X and Y. And we want to show that BXCY is cyclic. All right. So I'm going to start out. Um, so I see that there's an angle bisector. And there's also a midpoint of a side. Um, so in, in many problems, I've probably done this a couple times on my channel. But in general, it's very useful. If you have an angle bisector and a midpoint of, of the corresponding side, uh, often it helps to draw, um, so if you draw the perpendicular bisector through the midpoint of that side um, and you see where it meets the angle bisector, that lies on the circumcircle of ABC. And the reason for that, so I'm going to draw the circumcircle, but um, so why does the angle bisector of BAC meet uh, the perpendicular bisector of BC um, at a point on the circumcircle of ABC. Um, that's because basically, um, since angle BAC, um, since AF is, is the bisector of it, um, if, if we let that bisector meet the circle at a point F prime, let's say, well, then angle BAF prime would have to equal angle CAF prime. And so since equal angles um, intercept equal arcs, that would mean F prime would have to be the midpoint of arc BC. And so F prime would have to be F, which is um, where the perpendicular um, to BC through M uh, meets the angle bisector. Uh, so ABCF has to be cyclic. Um, and so, so this is, I just started out doing this because it's, it's useful in many problems. Um, and also, um, clearly, since MF and EY are both uh, perpendicular to BC, they have to be parallel. Um, and so since M is the midpoint of DE, F has to be the midpoint of DY. All right. Uh, so where do we go from here? Um, so ultimately, we want to show that BXCY is cyclic. Um, so there's a couple different ways to show that a quadrilateral is cyclic. Um, so one way is to try to use power of a point. Um, I'd say that's probably the most common way. Uh, but it's kind of hard to see here exactly how we would do that. That doesn't seem like um, the most effective strategy. I'm not saying that they're, it's impossible to do it that way, um, but I had trouble seeing how to do it that way. Um, and then another way is the inscribed angle theorem. So if we can show that, um, let's say two inscribed angles, let's say BXY is equal to BCY, uh, that would show it's cyclic. Um, but that also seems kind of hard. Um, Another strategy is to try to find the uh, center of the circle. Um, that also seems a little tricky. So I'm going to use a technique uh, different from all those. And um, it happens to be very useful in problems like these where you have to show a quadrilateral is cyclic, but the standard methods um, don't seem to work so easily. So basically, if I can't directly show BXCY is cyclic, maybe I can at, create another uh, point, a fifth point. And maybe I can show that um, three of 
the four original points are cyclic with that fifth point, and another subset of three of those points are also cyclic with that fifth point. And then that would prove it. Okay, so what would that fifth point be um, that's on the circumcircle of all four of those? Um, and it turns out that that fifth point that I'm going to use, it's um, basically if you extend segment XD, it's the perpendicular from Y to XD. Um, and that point um, by symmetry, BCY and that point form an isosceles trapezoid, and all isosceles trapezoids are cyclic. So that's kind of how um, you would think about that. Um, and I kind of thought about that because I saw all these perpendiculars. I thought, how could I leverage them to get that fifth point? Um, so that's kind of my strategy here. Okay, so I'm going to extend XD, and I'm going to let the perpendicular from Y to XD meet it at G. And now, by the symmetry of the figure, you can see that BCYG is an isosceles trapezoid, so therefore it has to be cyclic. So if those four points lie in a circle, and if, the, if it were actually true that BXCY was cyclic, then X would have to lie on that same circle, okay? So what else can we derive from this? Well, it's pretty clear that DEYG has to be a rectangle because all these um, angles are all perpendicular by construction. Um, so if F is the midpoint of DY, then it also has to be the midpoint of EG, because in a rectangle, um, obviously the, the two diagonals bisect each other. Uh, that's actually true in any parallelogram, not just a rectangle. Um, so here I wrote it out, DEYG is a rectangle, so EF and G are collinear. Okay. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, BCYG is an isosceles trapezoid, so it has to be cyclic. Um, and that can be seen in a couple of ways. Um, so one easy way is that the opposite angles have to add up to 180 degrees, and that's not too hard to see. So I'll let you uh, prove that if you haven't seen it before. Um, and so if those four points lie in a circle, then we want to show that X lies on that same circle, and that would solve the problem. So how do we do that? Um, so power of a point seems like clearly the easiest way here. Um, we would want to show that XD times DG is BD times DC, and that would uh, end up proving the problem. Okay, and they're all perpendicular, or, or XG is perpendicular to BC, so that seems like a pretty reasonable approach. Okay, now, so one thing um, that's worth noting is that uh, since XD is parallel to OF, triangle AXD has to be similar to triangle AOF. But triangle AOF is isosceles because OA is equal to OF since all radii are equal. Um, so therefore AXD has to also be isosceles. So I'm going to write that out. Um, so AX over XD is equal to AO over OF. And obviously that's equal to 1 since the radius AO is equal to the radius OF. And so AX has to equal XD, so AXD is isosceles. Um, and it's not hard to also see that um, DFG has to be isosceles um, because DEYG is, is a rectangle. Um, so since F is the center, uh, that's easy to see by symmetry. So we have two isosceles triangles, and they both share an angle because angle XDA is equal to angle DGDF. Um, so they have to be similar isosceles triangles. Um, so I'm going to write a, I'm going to do a little angle chase here. Um, that's fairly easy. So angle XAD has to equal angle XDA because because angle because triangle XAD is isosceles, and then angle XDA has to equal angle FDG obviously because those are vertical angles, and angle FDG has to equal angle FGD because like I mentioned, DF is equal to FG. And so what does that tell us? If angle XAD is equal to angle FGD, then that means that XAGF has to be cyclic. Um, uh, I, I wrote that, then I erased it. Um, but 
uh, XAGF is cyclic because XAD is FGD. That's and um, if two inscribed angles are equal, then the, the quadrilateral has to be cyclic. Um, okay. So how is that useful? Well, that can help us in using power of a point. So if XAGF is cyclic, um, we wanted XD times DG ultimately. But uh, if that's cyclic, then XD times DG is AD times DF. And AD times DF, so... so has to be BD times DC by power of a point again because BACF is cyclic, okay? So I'm gonna add that equality to the far right. Um, basically, so by the transitive property, we have XD times DG is BD times DC. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted to show um, because then by the converse of a power of a point, of essentially, that means that XBGC is cyclic, which is exactly what we were shooting for, um, because if XBGC is cyclic, and we already showed that BGYC is cyclic, then all five of those points have to lie on the same circle. And so since we see B, X, C, and Y are included in those five points, then B, X, C, Y has to be cyclic. And that solves the problem. So I feel like this was not the hardest IMO geometry problem. Uh, it was a number four. Um, so, but still, if you solved it, um, don't mean to take away any of the credit from you. Um, so it, it's definitely a very fun problem and uh, yeah, I didn't solve it right away. Um, so if you like this um, problem, give, give the video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.